it is hot out today, guys. I just got home from clinic. It is steamy. I can think of nothing better to do than to sit down and film a Q&A addressing your most frequently asked questions about sweating, sweaty pits, and deodorant. <laughs> So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a dermatologist. I film day in the life of a dermatologist vlogs, as well as sit down skincare related content similar to this video. So if this topic is of interest to you, uh, I encourage you to stick around and check it out. So in today's video, I'm gonna address your questions about what causes sweating, how to control it, deodorants. Is there any truth to the claims that deodorants cause cancer or Alzheimer's? So first of all, why do we even sweat to begin with? It seems unfair. However, in reality, sweat is a compensatory mechanism to cool the body. And an inability to sweat actually puts you at risk for overheating and heat stroke. So sweating is actually very important to remain intact. Everyone sweats and it's a signal that you're getting too warm. While it's necessary to sweat, and everybody sweats from their armpits, scalp, hair, body, palms and soles, etc., some individuals perceive that they sweat excessively. So while sweating is normal and everybody sweats, there are some conditions in which excessive sweating occurs, such as certain medical conditions like diabetes, um, certain medications can cause excessive sweating, excessive sweating or hot flashes can occur during menopause, even after menopause is complete, many women still continue to experience excessive sweating for reasons that are not clear. If you feel that your sweating is in far excess of what is normal, I encourage you to seek evaluation and management by your treating physician and or a dermatologist as some blood work can be obtained to rule out an underlying medical cause and your history can be evaluated to make sure that there's not a potential trigger causing your excessive sweating. And once that is properly evaluated, the, the best treatments for you can, can be pursued. But for run-of-the-mill sweating that we're all plagued by in the summer heat, what can you do? Well, probably the hallmark way to control excessive sweating is using an antiperspirant. And when applied correctly, antiperspirants actually can be uh, quite effective. The way an antiperspirant works is it sits on top of your skin and with time slowly trickles down into your ecrine sweat coil, into your ecrine sweat duct. This plugs up the duct and when your body senses that the duct is plugged up, it sends a signal to stop making so much sweat. However, some common side effects of antiperspirants are irritation and sometimes even a burning sensation when applied. Do antiperspirants cause breast cancer? Today, we have no evidence that antiperspirants cause breast cancer. So then where did that claim come from? Well, in laboratory studies, on cells in a dish, not in people, Aluminum containing underarm antiperspirants, when left on the skin near the breast, theoretically be absorbed into the breast tissue and have estrogen-like effects on breast cells, potentially promoting breast cancer. However, no studies to date have confirmed that risk in people. And a 2014 review of all of the literature concluded that there was no clear evidence showing that the use of aluminum containing antiperspirants increases the risk of breast cancer. I encourage you to expand the description box below of this video where I have listed some references. It's been peer reviewed and vetted by the medical and scientific community. Okay, so then a second concern that I frequently get is, well, maybe it's not the aluminum, but should I be concerned about parabens in my deodorant? Do those cause breast cancer? Some lab research is focused on parabens as a potential cancer-causing agent, and, lar and that's largely been done on cells in a dish and small animal models in laboratory studies, not people. It has been reported that parabens are found in breast tumors, but there is absolutely no evidence that parabens cause breast cancer. Although parabens are used in many, many cosmetics and pharmaceutical products, actually most deodorants in the United States don't even use parabens. <laughs> Furthermore, we have no evidence that parabens in cosmetics or prescription drugs cause any harm to human health. Another question that I get frequently on the channel with regards to aluminum is, does aluminum cause Alzheimer's disease? And is that something to worry about in our aluminum-containing deodorants? 
So during the 1960s and 1970s, aluminum emerged as a, as a possible suspect in causing Alzheimer's disease. And this suspicion led to concern about our everyday exposure to aluminum through sources such as cooking utensils, aluminum foil, beverage cans, antacids, and antiperspirants. However, since that time, studies have failed to confirm any role for aluminum in causing Alzheimer's disease. And therefore, few experts believe that everyday sources of aluminum in our environment or any risk to human health are causative in Alzheimer's disease. But we do know that the major risk factors for Alzheimer's disease are age as well as genetics. <clears throat> and if you're still worried, I also would encourage you to expand the description box and I'll list some references down below for you to read about. Still not interested in using antiperspirants? Are there any other options? What about natural deodorants? Using an all-natural, non-aluminum deodorant, while others may claim that it is helpful, for the most part, appears to be a futile effort. If you, if you still have reservations about wearing aluminum-containing deodorants, then skip deodorant altogether. It's a better use of your time and energy and money to not be putting anything under your armpits then. What other options are there for excessive sweating? Well, there's something that you might not be too familiar with. It's called iontophoresis. This can be particularly helpful on your palms and feet. It's a little bit more arduous under the arms. It requires a special device. It requires you to immerse your hands or feet in a shallow pan of tap water. And as you do this, a medical device sends a very low voltage current through the water. And for reasons that are not entirely clear, this low level current temporarily will shut down sweat production. Most people find they need to use this device about six to 10 times. And once you begin to see improvements, you can do it kind of as needed. So bring this up with your dermatologist, and if they feel it is right for you, they can give you a prescription to, to obtain one. Side effects from using this device can include dry skin or irritation. It can transiently burn or sting. And like I said, it only temporarily slows down sweat production. Another treatment option that dermatologists uh, can perform is, bo is a Botox injection. You actually only need a very, very tiny amount of the Botox injected into the underarms. And when performed properly, most patients have very, very little discomfort from this procedure. It's actually FDA approved for treatment of excessive sweating under the arms. And some research studies suggest that it is helpful in other areas such as palms and soles, and it is frequently used there as well. It can also help postmenopausal women who sweat excessively on the head. Botox works by temporarily blocking chemical in the body that stimulates sweat production. And you usually can expect to see a marked improvement and decreased sweat within about four to five days of receiving the injections. This procedure can be associated with some temporary weakness at the treatment site, which typically resolves. And overall, this is quite effective. And the results are usually sustained for four to six months. There are some prescription medications for excessive sweating. These medicines work by decreasing the amount of sweat production. They're not ideal for athletes who actually need to sweat to keep the body cool, but they might be right for you. So again, it's best to seek evaluation and management by a dermatologist to see if this treatment might be right for you. The name of this medication is glycopyrrolate. Side effects of this medication, because it slows down sweat production, it also decreases saliva production and kind of other secretions. So you can have dry eyes and dry mouth. And sometimes it can make your heart beat a little funny. So there's that. These risks, however, are much more likely at using high doses of, of the glycopyrrolate, much higher than is necessary or is frequently used to treat sweating. So in general, it's quite well tolerated. And as sort of an extreme measure, one that is not performed too often is surgery to remove the sweat glands or to remove some of the nerves that innervate the sweat glands and drive sweat production. Or in some instances, laser surgery can vaporize the sweat ducts temporarily. What about handheld medical devices to destroy the sweat glands? This is a newer treatment and a medical doctor such as a dermatologist can operate this device to treat excessive sweating. If this is an option, the dermatologist uses a machine that emits electromagnetic energy and this energy destroys the sweat gland and it can be performed in one or two office visits generally. However, this is a newer treatment, and unlike other treatments, there is just simply, there's simply less data, so we don't quite know how long the results last or if there are any long-term side effects. But so far, it appears to be safe and effective. 
So I just kind of want to go over some tips about how to actually apply an antiperspirant because, and so the way that you want to apply deodorant is actually at night before you go to bed, not in the morning, not when you're actively sweating, but at night to clean dry skin. And the reason is, as I mentioned before, the deodorant molecules have to trickle down into your sweat gland and plug them up. And after they're plugged up, then your brain sends a signal, then your brain detects this and decides to stop producing so much sweat. If you apply deodorant on first thing in the morning, A, like 50% of it swipes off on your dark black blazer and then you've got deodorant stains, and B, you start sweating as you walk around, even if you don't notice that you're sweating, there is some perspiration there, there is some light perspiration, and it's, it's just washing off the deodorant, so it's rendering it basically useless, it can't do its thing while you're actively producing sweat and sweat is flowing out of that gland. Sweat production is lowest at nighttime and so that is when deodorant is best put on the skin. Like I said, the, the deodorant sits on the skin, it trickles down into the sweat follicle and that's basically how it works. So one thing that people frequently um, verbalize in the comments is that they, are de they find all deodorant sting or burn or incredibly irritating. Well, here's the deal. You actually don't have to leave deodorant on okay so what you can do is after you put it on and it does its thing while you're sleeping when you wake up in the morning simply take a damp cloth and wipe it off you, it's no longer necessary it's trickled down into the sweat gland you know your brain is already going oh my god we've got a plug duck let's stop making so much sweat so that is one way to think about trying to use your deodorant. Deodorant ingredients can be very irritating, and so that is one way to cut down on excessive irritation from deodorant. Another thing that people don't realize is while deodorant is like supposed to be, while deodorant is sold to be used under the armpits and we're taught to use it that way, you can also put it on your feet if you suffer from sweaty feet. You can also put a uh, deodorant on the bottoms of your feet and cover your feet with a so with socks at night if you can tolerate sleeping that way it's most effective because it drives the deodorant molecule down into the sweat ducts and then you can just wash your feet off in the morning there is an antiperspirant which contains alum which is a generally which are generally aluminum zirconium salts or aluminum chlorhexahydrate salts and these are actual antiperspirants that have the ingredients that can trickle down into the sweat and plug them up those are the ones that actually will decrease sweat production and then you have deodorant which ha which are you know stick formulations of essentially fragrance and so here is the other other point in, in thing that you should think about. Are you bothered by the active production of sweat and excessive sweat or are you bothered by the smell of your sweat? And here's why it's an important point because when we sweat, our actual human sweat is really just water and salt. It has no odor. The odor that you the odor that is offensive socially results when sweat is left on the skin and allowed to be broken down by the bacteria that naturally live on our skin. One way to cut down on this is to simply remove sweat uh, as expeditiously as you're able to with a damp washcloth and follow it by a dry washcloth to keep the area free of sweat. Don't allow it to sit on the skin. So that's a tip. Another tip is to use an antibacterial body wash like the benzoyl peroxide wash I use in these areas to cut down on some of the bacteria that normally live there or some some offender bacteria that you may acquire as a result of being in the gym. This can also help and it is frequently recommended. This can help just cut down on the amount of bacteria that are breaking down the excessive sweat and making you stink. Distinguish between whether or not you want an antiperspirant, antiperspirant which would be one containing aluminum uh, based salts like aluminum zirconium salts or aluminum chlorhexahydrate salts or if you actually just want to improve the smell. And then as far as deodorants that I think are good, I happen to be a fan of this Dove Clinical Protection one. Um, unfortunately, it does have fragrance in it. Most deodorants do. And so if you are allergic to fragrance, deodorants containing fragrance can be even more irritating to you. And sometimes the irritation can be so 
unbearable. It can lead to discoloration under the armpits and be a source of kind of discolored armpits for people. So ideally you would choose an antiperspirant that is free of fragrance. And I will list some in the description box below. They can be a little tricky to find, but I have some good ones that um, I will list in the description box that are good antiperspirants, meaning they contain aluminum, aluminum salts um, that will trickle down and plug up the sweat ducts and they don't have fragrance that can irritate you. And like I said, put them on at night before you go to bed and no need to leave them on all day. Just wipe them off in the morning and they've done their antiperspirant thing. So I will list those down in the description box below for you guys. So yeah, those are my tips. I do happen to like this one. I um, occasionally use this myself. Um, but anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys in my next Q&A. Bye.